Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the uh, trade friction. Do we need it? When people are doing business, one of the people is dissatisfied with a deal. He or she may choose to uh, use some measures to protect his or her benefit. And the measures may also hurt other people. Then the friction is produced. So does the trade friction. The difference is trade friction is between countries and it's more complicated. Trade friction seems far away from, our, from us, but they are embodied in our daily life because we are living in a globalized world. Every single product we may use may be made in somewhere in the world. However, trade friction usually causes a raising tariff and it reflected on the price we pay. In this case, trade friction is not part of politics. It's affecting you and me. Recently, the U.S. have some trade friction with some other countries in the world. Do we need trade friction? People have different ideas about it. I know some people may argue that trade makes some local industries hard to survive. Or the U.S. lose a lot of money in the trade. Some of these people even call on the government to increase the tax of uh, foreigner companies. President Trump supports these views as well, and he posted trade war are good and easy to win in his Twitter. In fact, I understand their ideas and practice. I know that they want to win their dissatisfaction with the results and show tough attitudes through trade friction. I believe that some of you may think so too. But before you do that, you should know trade friction could hurt both, both of you. Think about it. When two people are fighting, one is strong and the other one is weak. In order to make the weak person compromise, the big guy decided to smash him with his fist. Finally, the weak guy admits defeat, but the head of the big guy may get hurt. It's an example from our daily life, and meanwhile, the zero can be applied to understand the trade friction. The fact is both of you get hurt and just to make you feel psychologically comfortable. Also, our history told us we should say no to the trade friction. In the 1930s, in order to protect the U.S. economy, President Hoover signed the Smooth Havilay Tariff Act, which raised the tariffs on thousands of imported items and it up to 59%. Soon, high tariffs have led to Canada's revenge. They also increased the tariff on U.S. imports. At that moment, U.S. imports fall by about 66% and U.S. made exports fall by 61%, which is a lot. I have to point out that the U.S. made exports only took 5% in our uh, GDP in 1930, but today, this percentage raised up to 13%, and it's about 2.21 trillion dollars every year. In other words, trade friction will hurt us more and make us worse than 1930s. To be exact, we can't make money from high tax through the trade friction. In contrast, we have to face higher price and lower quality products. Now, if I make you to make a choice, do you think we still need the trade friction? Therefore, trade friction is not a good way to achieve the deal. It can hurt both sides. We should avoid it. Thank you for your list, uh, listening. Bye-bye.